We moved 10 years forward from our previous investigation. As the midnight chime echoes through a massive, grand ballroom, Clara Valentine's elegant departure goes unnoticed amidst the revelry. The starry elegance, a night of giving charity ball, pulses with life. Its opulent setting bathed in golden hues and the soft tinkling of crystal glasses. An ethereal laughter escapes Clara's lips as she maneuvers through the glittering crowd, her midnight blue gown shimmering with every graceful step. But as the night unfurls, a palpable sense of unease wrap around her, wraps around her like a sinister shroud. Clara walks the moonlit streets alone. The click of her heels on the cobblestones of haunting counterpoint to the distant saxophone's melodic serenade. The world outside is draped in an eerie spectral fog swallowing the city's grandeur and transforming it into a realm of shadows and secrets. The woman quickens her pace, a nervous glance over her shoulder, revealing nothing but the empty fog shrouded streets, a feeling of being pursued, claws at her spine and the hairs on her neck stand on end. Whispers, soft and sinister, slither through the mist, insidious as the creeping tendrils of darkness. She clutches her throat, feeling the invisible weight of impending doom. Panic taints her breath, each inhale like a shiver down her spine, for the whispers now feel like a swarm of invisible insects crawling beneath her skin, going into her ears, out her nose, and into her mouth. Desperation fuels her steps as she rushes towards a forgotten alleyway where a flickering gas lamp casts eerie shadows on the damp cobblestones. She retrieves a lantern from her bag. Collapsible, flat at first, opens up, green light coming out, and with a trembling hand ignites the pale flame. In a desperate, frantic motion, she is able to open a thinning, a portal with this lantern that shimmers with otherworldly energy from the flare. Before her trembling fingers, she suspends a delicate necklace, a cherished heirloom, and sends it through the portal's shimmering gateway to her only connection, her only confidant, Dr. Rupert Pemberton Smith. With a determined but trembling resolve, she whispers, keep it safe. In the moment of that act, a sinister presence materializes from the fog, cloaked in shadows. It strikes with deadly precision. The world around her shifts and distorts as the figure pierces the air and finds its mark. Its lethal intent unmistakable. Her eyes widen, the truth of her fate sinking in, but her last breath escapes as she crumbles, crumples to the cobblestones. A hand covered in wisps of shadow and darkness leaves a particular ancient looking tomb, tome, book by her side. And the clacking of those boot steps echo into the night as a hand lays open, covered in blood as it drains nearby. We now move over from the streets of London to the stone streets of Rome. The clattering of hooves on a horse galloping feverishly down the street. A car horn <laughs> driving to and fro trying to dodge pedestrians as light blares out of the front of this, like it's, it's got a ruby red coloration to it, spokes wheeling, flashing, and a motorcycle <laughs> with huge metal siding on either uh, parts of it where the middle of it kind of wraps around the front tire chasing after an assailant. This is our circle here today. 
the assailant also in a getaway car. Uh, they have this weird mechanical device on their forearm that with two uh, circles around it, pistons interjected into their forearm as they reach, as they smash the window, going back to you, poof, poof, shooting these almost spectral-like skulls out of it towards your direction. You have been following the last distributor of tech from a group known as EOS, a group that perverses the nature of the flare and injects it in technology. This was the group that had made that containment unit that you had discovered back in the Bridalburn Mountains that housed that beast that you resolved. You've eliminated all the tech in this world so far, and this is the last thread to eliminate. Now, I would like to ask the circle here. Two of you are on the horseback. Two of you are in the car. One of you is on the motorcycle. And I'm gonna ask out loud, which two of you are on the horse? Who's, who's I'll be on the horse? At, who's good at driving? Doctor's on the horse. Got a I'll buddy? I'll be on the horse with you, Doctor, if you want. Whisper's on the horse, say, Doctor Whisper on the horse, two people in the car. I'll be in the car. Okay. I think we all Don't know who's on the motorcycle here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to yes. speed around the bush. All right, Rep on the motorcycle, yeah. and then Oliana on the in the car with Tony. She's classy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are you all doing? I'm holding uh, on for dear life, <laughs> second life. <laughs> Oliana, uh, if if you can get us in close enough, I can I can jump into their vehicle. And she goes and she moves the car over to the right. Oh, actually, she's gonna move back over. Open the door. What? Kick it open. She's gonna try to jerk the car so it throws them. All right, <laughs> make, make it be a. Move or strike roll, your choice. Ooh, uh, yeah, let's go. Or control as well, because this is actually drive. Move and strike are the same for me. Uh, so okay. I will, I'll, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a move. I'll do a move. Uh, oh, I rolled two twos, y'all. But but I but I'll take the two oh. on the gilded die and re uh, reload up. So drive. drive back. All right, Oliana, yeah. I'll have you make the same roll. You can make a control have, uh, or a move. I have or a strike. five. And I have a three. Okay, so nice. mixed success. So for Tony and Oliana, you are able to get up beside the other car of this assailant. You get up right beside it and you smash into the side car. The door opens up. Tony, you're ready to leap out and get into the other car. But Oliana, as you do that, the impact on hitting the car just slightly hits the top of your head into the wheel for a second. It's just juddering. So you're going to take a body. Tony, as you are leaped out of the car, you miss it by just a hair as the car just skips ahead just by the, like, just by the nick. You almost reached on the back of the car to grab onto it, but you missed it, and you grab on the other side of the car that Oleana's driving, but your legs just skid on the hard stone ground. You're going to take Two body. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Oh! Uh, but, but, so I'm still holding onto our car? Your car. So you weren't able to get onto his car, but okay. in the last ditch effort, you grabbed onto the handle of the last door and you're just means <laughs> drag behind your own car right now. That was a bit forceful. <laughs> but you are still in pace with it. You didn't lose uh, your uh, distance. The mixed success for Oleana was able to keep in time with it, so you're still beside it. We'll move over to Doctor and Whisper. On the horse, keeping pace. How are you catching up to the assailant? Do you want to try to do anything to take, take them off their uh, route? What would you like to do? Can I focus on the car and see if there's any weaknesses to it? I uh, wouldn't have to make a roll for that. It's... Okay. Just a, a normal car, you know, go for the wheels, uh, try to get it off balance. You can try to reach the driver somehow to stop the car. 
uh, swerve it off the road, have it hit a traffic, or it had a, a, a gas lamp, a uh, street lamp of some sorts. Got any ideas, Doctor? Yep, yeah, reach into my bag and grab one of my science grenades. <laughs> just got it! Grenade! Do I just, do you want me to just chuck it? Chuck away, my dear! Hell yeah! All right, Shut so Momo, grenade. you're gonna make me a strike. Uh, mm, let me see, actually control. I have a, a circle in that. All right, so you'll roll a D6. If you have one circle in control, it'd be one D6. If you have any drives, you can add that to your roll. I don't. There's a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the, with the science grenade, you give it over to Whisper and, but they sort of lean out the car and the wind whipping, or sorry, you're on the horse, <laughs> my bad. Uh, on the horse, galloping forward. Um, but there's a bit of a debris coming from the street as the two cars are kind of weaving back and forth. One of them hits a mailbox as it poof, hits over, starts to tumble towards your horse. The horse leaps over, but as you're about to throw the grenade, it just jostles you and you throw it up instead of forward, oh, and it yeah. poof, explodes beside you. Not The detonation doesn't throw you off the horse, but the, uh, the magic residue from the science grenade just splashes into your direction, and you're both gonna take bleed. What about the horse? Is the horse okay? The horse is okay. There's a bit of magic on it as well. It, it neighs in a bit of pain but it's still able oh, to dear, dear. make its way forward. Yeah, some of that sort of effervescent, bioluminescent blue that shatters and turns into dust when the grenade goes off, some of it kind of burns in the horse's hide. So it neighs, it wails, but it's able to keep on going forward. And finally, come to Repo. Uh, Repo revs the motorcycle, rides up next to Tony. Tony, could you hold the motorcycle for a moment? Reach over, holding one arm on the door, one arm on the motorcycle, <laughs> holding it steady. And I light a cigarette. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is okay, this the I'm best gonna... time for that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I take a hold of the motorcycle, and then Repo's going to speed up, and I have burglary equipment. And I assume one of those pieces is probably like, like a grappling hook of some sort. So I'm going to mm -hmm. try to like get the hook into the window of the vehicle of the like escaper. All right, make me a control. Done. I'm gonna use a drive, cause I don't trust this. <laughs> that is one six. Hey, there you go, success. So as Tony's legs are just going, just flailing and he dragged on the stone streets, holding onto your motorcycle, those that large frame doing what it needs to do, holding yourself in place, well, Captain America with the motorcycle in the bottom of the, ah! uh, uh, Repo, you're able to light, uh, no, sorry, get that grappling hook out, throw it into the uh, back door car, the front door car. Let's do back door. Back door. So, smashes the window, catches on, hold the rope taut, you feel like you start to stand on the motorcycle as these three vehicles are all in unison with the horse slowly, uh, catching up behind, but if you want, you're able to use that top rope to get into the back seat. Or however else you'd like to approach this vehicle. Here you go, Tony. And I give Tony the rope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with him giving the, the rope as your motorcycle falling behind. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so Tony, you got your hand on the rope towards the, the getaway car, your own car, the motorcycle, just falls and slides, sparks fly all over the, the street. The horse, once again, <laughs> leaps over. Now that you're on the car, Repo, what would you like to do? Repo? Tony will be on the car, because I gave Tony the rope, because I don't want the rope. Oh, you didn't go towards the car? No, so I, that, uh, sorry, let me clarify. Uh, Repo would then, after getting the rope attached, give the rope to Tony and then like kind of like swap with Tony and get in the car with his sibling where it's safer. Gotcha. Okay. My mistake. So yeah, Tony's so you like kind of switch. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the two of you switch places. You're able to get into uh, the passenger seat with your sister, Oleana. Yeah. I miss that Thank part. you. 
You think you could be a little more careful? Ah, uh, could, yes. Just a second. And we still have the three people following us, correct? Yeah, you've got, you got your two friends on horseback trailing behind. You've got this assailant in this getaway car that you're trying to get after. Tony is uh, has the rope going towards the getaway car, I'm assuming. <gasps> yep. I'm, I'm pulling myself up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my item from my pocket. And I'm going to pull out two playing cards. And I'm going to flick them and they light up. And I'm going to throw them boomerang style at the tires of the car in front of us that we're chasing. Ooh, that is awesome. Yeah, make Let's me see. a control roll for that. Why did you wait to do that when Tony started climbing the car? Ah, six. Yes. Hey. Fantastic. <laughs> we'll resolve Tony in a minute here. <laughs> so the playing cards light up flick them right in front of sort of Repo's direction as Repo has to kind of like put their head back uh, in the seat as these flaming cars <laughs> fly sort of boomerang around the car and they whip past <laughs> loud pops of the wheels explode. <laughs> the spokes sparking behind it on the stone streets as pedestrians are just running away from cafes and little wine parties and just running all into alleyways to make way for this insane cacophony of madness that's approaching them. The wheels and I'm gonna are drift. In front of it? I'm gonna drift, I'm gonna go around and then I'm gonna drift. Awesome, make me uh, another control move, another control roll. Five. Five, mixed success. So as you turning it around, at this same time, Tony, what are you doing? Uh, I am letting go of the car. And again, <laughs> me and Repo, I'm gonna attempt to jump onto the motorcycle. So I have the rope on top of the motorcycle and I'm trying to pull myself onto the back of their of, of, of their vehicle. Okay, so make me a move. Okay, I'm using, uh, I'm using a drive. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna do that here. Uh, that's a five. I will take that five. Mixed success. Okay. So as you are uh, trying to pull yourself up towards the car, your legs are still heavily damaged from hitting that big hit on the road. And the stress of you just trying to make this work and pull yourself out of the situation, you will take a brain. Okay. And as you start to leap on towards the top of the car, Oleana, you're able to spin in front of the car and it looks like the distance is still gonna impact the passenger seat where Repo is for that mixed success. So as it goes in, it hits the passenger seat and jostles your car. You stop the car, but the both of you hit violently on the sides of your own vehicle. So the two of you will take another, uh, sorry, Repo will take a body for that. And as Tony, as you are uh, on top of the car as well, you see Oleana drift in towards it and it's about to collide. What would you like to do in this moment? And also I will allow Doctor and Whisper, you've now kind of caught up uh, towards the back of the car. You can kind of almost see the series of events happening in slow motion. So if you want to intervene somehow to help Tony, I will allow that. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for anything uh, soft on the sides of the road. Trash, uh, hay, um, <laughs> like a fruit stand, uh, like in, anything that could, that could, that I would slam into that wouldn't be like rocks or <laughs> rocks on the ground at this yeah, moment. Yeah, as, as you uh, see the, the two cars, of, oh, sorry, yeah, whisper. I, I have two circles and a filled out uh, diamond and six drive things in focus, which says inspect, analyze, remember. Could I maybe look for something soft that Tony could fall into and be like, look at that, a pile of pillows. How convenient. <laughs> you know what? Here's how this is gonna go. Cause I love on the fly GMing. Whisper, mm. if you roll this very well, I will give Tony advantage on the next roll. Oh, I'm known for that rolling <laughs> really well. Well, okay, so uh, <laughs> two circles. 
Mechanically, Ooh. also, she could just give me a drive, right? To pull this oh, off. Oh, could I do that? That is true. So there's two, there's kind of a, a risk reward here. So any one player can offer a drive to any one player. Any single player can use as many of their own drives to aid a roll if they so choose. Uh, the situation here is, Whisper, if you're gonna use your focus to try to find like a trash pile, let's say, for Tony to go, oh yes, doctor, doctor, I see the hand, I see the what hand, if, I see the hand. What, what if one of my science grenades was an expanding foam <laughs> made, if, if you throw it and it expands it, uh, into a, a huge pile of foam that then can break someone's fall. I've been spending the last 10 years perfecting these, you know, for just this occasion. All right, so with science grenades, you've used one so far. The fragmentation, right, say, and now I'll, we've got the foam one. I'll say you have three total, so that is one of three. Uh, totally okay with me if you and Whisper want to discuss on the horse. Be like, I'm trying to look for a trash pile. Like, I have one of my science grenades that <laughs> foams. And the two of you can decide which route you'd like to go. I feel really I, bad I, about I, wasting yeah, I'm, one I'm of your back science. The yes, thing is, Momo true. seems to be better in focus. To use the grenade would be a strike or control. Most likely control, because right. you are sort of shooting, throwing the I, uh, grenade. And I think you're a little bit lower in that. I used one and I blew us up. Maybe we, I don't think <laughs> car chases are really my area of expertise. Okay, so use that focus roll. See if you can uh, analyze the situation, the area around you, to see if you can find a soft place for Tony to land. Okay, I have two circles, which means I get two dice. And That's correct, two what D6s. Do, what do I use the drives for? Uh, if you want to add an extra D6, because you um, always take the best result, the single best result, as your um, I'm roll. going to do that. So I okay. have three dice. Uh, oh, I got, I got a six. Hey, success. Yes. And was there a, a diamond beside your focus filled in by chance? Yes. But I didn't okay. choose a gilded die. I forgot to do that. That is okay. I'll just give that one to you, and we'll have a couple mulligans with that. Thank you. Uh, but you do get to replenish a drive with that. Yeah. Um, oh, so. A limo. <laughs> <goodness is well. laughs> hey, hey, that's what it comes from. Um, because you get so many second chances in this life. Um, so, Tony, as this, these two cars are about to collide into each other, you're holding a rope in your one hand with the grappling hook. You see Oleana pull this Tokyo Drift move with their cherry red car, a little bit beaten up at this point. It's about to hit into the passenger side. You hear Whisper, although extremely quiet most of the time, somehow is able to get over the loud raucous of the situation and be like, trash heap, three o'clock. Uh-huh. So uh, I will let you heap. make a move roll with advantage. How many circles do you have in move? I have two circles in move. Two circles in move? Okay, I will allow you to, let's see, with advantage. I guess you already have advantage with two of them. Uh, I'll give you another D6. That'll okay. be your, like, sort of an inspiration. Sure. So I'm rolling three. One of them is gilded. Come on. Uh, I rolled a six on the gilded die. Hey, there yeah. you go. So you hear that and almost in this like, <laughs> in, in a steampunk Bioshock oh, Fast and Furious moment, the car drifts in front of the other one and you launch yourself into this trash heap pile in front of a bakery full of soft breads and stale goods. The impact is hard, but you don't you don't break any bones. You don't hurt yourself too much as you're able to roll out of it and kind of uh, allow yourself to be positioned on the front stoop. But the cars do impact each other. It does stop the uh, engine. Smoke starts to rise out of it. You have a dent in the sidecar, but your car is still pretty much okay. The two inside just got a bit jostled. Um, and you can see that the passenger is just rocked. They are look like they're concussed. They're opening up the door to try to get out, and they're just kind of stumbling. With you two in the car, what would you like to do? Well, the car is stopped. Do we want to get out and try a little... Yeah, I would say brute sure. force, but maybe negotiation. Look, 
You be negotiation. I'll be brute force. Nice style. We are two sides of a coin. Very, very strange coin. Yeah. One of a kind. Unique, Kitty. God, twins are so weird. Uh, <laughs> but at, at, the, at that moment, when they get out, it is probably clear that they are almost like seeing a coin on two sides. There is Regency and there is Radical, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. What he's trying to say is I'm the there. classy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm the, well, classy without the CL. Hmm. <laughs> At this point, you start to see the assailant start to collect himself and is starting to run away from you. Oh, well, what that do you want to do? do? Okay, let's make a bet. I bet you my bullet hits them before your cards. Ooh, I like those. You oh. go for the left leg, I'll go for the right. How about I choose? Fine. Your mark gets set. Go, go on, go, or go after. Go on, go. And it's it's probably ridiculous that like they're having this conversation while this person is like. Running. He's pretty injured, so he's not like you know, yeah. athlete sprinting. He's got like yeah. a bit of a limp. His ribs are concaved in. Wow. Blood is coming off from the side of his head from being jostled in the car. So he's oh, like, he's, he's kind of like John Wick running. He's like. Mm. <laughs> All right, you ready? All right, you mark. Get set. Set. All right. Go. I'm going to have Go. both of you make control rolls, and we'll see yep. who hits who. Deal. Six. Oh. Three. Oh. Mm. Fail. Um. Mm. You know what? I probably bump her a little bit. Is it on purpose? <laughs> Is it on accident? Who knows? Yeah. Basically, this was this this was whoever uh, it was. Basically, the two of you determined the result of this action, so I won't get I won't get penalized. But yeah, with that result, uh, Rep, you're like you're getting your gun ready. Oleana, you're getting your cards lit up and fire, and just with just the slightest little cheap move, Rep will just just nudges you a little bit as you oh, just miss it just by a hair as you're actually just singes the fibers on the target's leg as Rep's bullet. <laughs> impacts the back, it was going for the leg, right? Yeah. Yeah, impacts the back of the calf muscle. Ah! Falls down on the ground. Their uh, device impacts on the uh, stone road and you hear a loud crack and a sizzle. And by that point, Doctor and Whisper <laughs> pulled back on the horse, caught up to the rest. Tony Mulligan covered in day old cupcakes, bagels, flour, <laughs> bread, all kinds of goods, as you all start to kind of meet in the middle here. I'm, you I'm... are aware it's called a cheap shot for a reason. Yeah, but it's a shot nonetheless. Tony Come on now, see Biscuit. It's going to be okay. This is the the same sea biscuit uh, that we are all familiar with because it is around that time. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tony Tony is, is is now lifted uh, lifted this assailant up. We, I don't know who it is yet, uh, and I'm throwing it in front of the other four. Ugh, stay down this time. You caused enough trouble as it is. And is you bodies? two, just talking to with each other instead of instead of taking him out right away, making me run on these legs. Yeah. Well, that was a personal choice. That's true. You could have taken a horse. From the, I was in the I was in the garbage. What you What do you mean the horse? Oh, then you should have rode the can. That's not. Listen, can we get this over with? Someone put the cart before the horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, sister. So what are we going to do with him? <laughs> oh, well, right. he can't go anywhere. Going to let him bleed out on the street then? I mean, I'm fine with that personally. That's not an option. I Let's at least get as much information as we can before we let him bleed out. That's fair. Maybe we go yeah. somewhere a bit uh, more uh, 
Discreet? Discreet, yeah. Hmm. I mean, people are looking. Ah, well, let's uh, gather him up and take him. Uh, you look. You look around somewhere. at the street at this point. Yes. Uh, because of this massive car accident, it did make a lot of noise. But because of the velocity you were all chasing this assailant, people just ran like from the main streets into alleyways away. So you get the sense that you've got a few moments to yourselves until people sort of start to slowly kind of come check out the carnage that ensued afterwards. It must be the adrenaline, but I've forgotten why we were chasing this man in the first place. He's he's with Eos. Oh right, you're with Eos. Yeah, ah. that thing on his on his arm. You're supposed to take it back in. Oh right, we'll be taking that. Just like just writhing in pain, just holding his ribs. Yeah, he, he has like he's like powerless right now. Like he can't he barely moves. Got a bullet in his calf. He's been through a car accident. Yeah, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And I'd much rather if we did this the easy way. So if you could just uh, remove remove your machinery so that we can confiscate it and we can just all get on with our night. Valid. Are you wearing a pillowcase? I yeah, am, with, yes, I, I'm a ghost. Oh. 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 <laughs> and you so see the devices, the device is kind of just like smoking and sparking in certain places. It seems to be kind of detached from his arm, from the impact. Mm. So you'd be able to just like take that right off of him if you wanted to. Oh, excellent. Yes, thank you so much for your time. Ah, you scrape it off. You can see that some of the metal has like dug into his skin from the impact. So as you mm. take it off, it just kind of like rakes the skin off a little bit and blood sort of starts to pour down from the arm and spitters on the stone. Oh, sorry, is, sorry, sorry. Oh, is sorry. the blood the right <gasps> color? Uh, yes. I'm just making sure this world's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I can throw him in the trunk and we can take him back to headquarters. Or a hospital. Oh, and later. Be fine. Maybe headquarters first. And he's, he's, can I like take some of his clothes, rip, make kind of like a rag and get Always him like a taking makeshift clothes. bandage? Look, I don't wear his clothes. Look, we, we, talk, we talked about this like 10 years ago, Stock. I stopped taking other people's clothing. All right. Actually, mm. this is a good time as you're, as you're hashing this out to go through you one by one and for you to describe to me, what does your character look like 10 years later? Uh, do, they, do they have the same clothes? Do they have different styles? Have they accrued new scars? Uh, all that good stuff. We'll start with uh, Arcane, Tony. Uh, Tony is looking much more sobered up, uh, much, much less uh, uh, simple now. Tony's all about getting stuff done. He's been through a lot uh, in the circle, and you can tell by that look in Tony's eye that he's not messing around anymore. He's not just doing this for fun. Uh, this is a job that he takes very seriously. Uh, he's still wearing uh, what looks to be his uh, gray leather, leather vest that he's always worn, uh, the same scarlet pants, but uh, everything is tattered with age. It's been repaired multiple times. Uh, you can also see that uh, his, his right hand uh, has been uh, scarred immensely uh, from that fateful day uh, when he destroyed that monster once and for all. Uh, didn't consider what impact, what toll that must, must have taken on him. Uh, and he's got scars and uh, breaks and, and different things all up his, his right arm. Uh, some, some pieces with strange machinery uh, that's replaced certain joints and things. Uh, and he's, uh, he's, he's looking worse for wear, but more wise when you when you interact with them awesome <laughs> that's super cool uh oliana part of the circle was not there for the last adventure but is joining us for this one what does your character look like my character has this is great so it's a very 1930s influence style like a very sad and very cute little like a bit of a pussy bow and puffs up the sleeves in a two-part set, 
And so it's the satin blouse tucked into a nice satin skirt. She's got a nice little pair of the rounded toe shoes with a little tiny heel, a little bit of a kitten. And she has a very smart pink bob. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sounds great. We're going over to, to Repo. <sighs> Repo has a new vest. It's like a lighter brown. And he is wearing his coined white shirt that does have a few spots of red, but it's nothing you couldn't get if you didn't wash it. He also has a larger, almost like trench kind of pea coat on. There's a pocket watch and his pistol. It's the same one that you saw from years and years ago. Shinier black boots. And it looks like instead of as many cigarettes, he's got a couple cigars that he keeps inside of his vest. They also still say in case of emergency on the side. A little bit more of a beard growed in with kind of like that ashy tint to it. And he wears his hair up more now, up and out of the way. Get lit's blood on it. Or alcohol or dirt, anything. It's not, it's not just blood. Who told you that? <laughs> not me. Uh, moving over to the doctor. The doctor looks exactly the same as he did 10 <laughs> years ago. Dusty gray coat, dusty gray suit. You know, Wilford Brimley was 49 years old when he did the movie Cocoon, and then he played old guys for the next 40 years. You have no idea how old the doctor is, and you never will. <laughs> Set your ways. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Love it. And over to Whisper. Whisper has also stayed frozen in time. Uh, she has different clothes now, but the exact same style and stature. She's still wearing oven mitts and still covered head to toe in fabric. Still wearing a sheet over her head tied with a ribbon and glasses over top so that you can at least pretend to be looking her in the eyes. Fantastic. <laughs> um, and it's at this moment as you are discussing what to do uh, with this last remaining distributor of EOS tech signifying the tying of the loose end to this long trail that you've been searching for these past 10 years. Um, suddenly, Doctor, you hear a noise kind of come up above you around here. Swirling of realities clashing as effervescent green light suddenly shows in an oval-like shape. What hear is a familiar voice call to you. Keep it safe. A hand comes out, drops a locket. Portal close. Did we all see reckon? this? Yes. That the doctor, voice? you immediately recognize the voice. That was the locket. Clara! Aura. What what do I know about the the locket? The locket was is a is a piece of jewelry that they cherish more than anything, and they never ever ever take it off, ever. And as that hand extended out, you saw blood dripping down the palm. And as you look at the necklace itself, it has still some of that blood stained on it, and a little bit of a shine like a light, almost like a, I want to say, a, uh, a thin layer of what might look like watered down paint almost on the bulk of it. Don't, uh, we're, uh, uh, and we're back at our headquarters, correct? Or are we still? Uh, this, was, this happened on the street when this happened, oh. but we can say moving uh, forward a little bit, uh, you've gone to your safe house. Candela Obscura does have safe houses sort of scattered all over the world for their investigators to seek refuge in. Uh, they usually have a little secret room uh, involved that has like some local archives and things like that for, for research purposes to help you in whatever investigations you're currently on. Um, but yes, at this point, you've reached your safe house. Uh, some local authorities, Candela members have come and dispatched of the EOS member um, and you're just trying to kind of make sense of everything. Well, I would, I would grab the locket with some tongs and take it into my laboratory and analyze it immediately under a microscope. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, make me a focus roll. Very well. I have two and a gilded. So... Ah, I got six on the gilded. Six. Amazing. So you take the locket and you put it down. And you take your back your tools out to inspect even further. And as you're able to just zoom in at a microscopic level with a telescope, you're able to ascertain what the material is that's kind of smattered on the inside. It's undark. No. The viscous material that you discovered 10 years ago on your investigation with R Corp. That same, it's old, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's still a bit fresh. Um, doesn't look like it was freshly made. Uh, looks like maybe some of it was kept uh, in storage for some time. Um, you don't touch it right away, or at least like you've, you've held a lock in your hand, but you don't touch it anymore because you know how dangerous the substance can get. Um, but as you take some, uh, some dark light, a black light nearby, and kind of shine it over the locket. This bright green shine kind of glows from the brass and gold necklace. This is most curious and most uh, concerning to me. Uh, there's undark on this locket. Could I carefully open the locket? Maybe there's a hint inside. Uh, so the locket, I don't believe it opened. Uh, Clara described it as a branching of a tree. So it's more of like a, a symbol, like a charm. Hmm. Totem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I will put it inside one of my uh, bags, uh, one of my uh, field laboratory bags that I bring on missions to, uh, to collect samples. Put okay. it inside there, and then put that uh, inside my uh, my case. And keep it secret and safe. Secret, keep it safe. At if, this point, oh yeah, whisper. If I wanted to like spiritually dream fast with Clara, is that a thing that I could do? Potentially with a sense roll or something. Ooh, interesting pitch. You are a spirit. Hmm. Sense roll. Okay, I will give that to you. The connection to the spirit world and the facets of the flare can sometimes have dangerous consequences if it goes wrong. But it's a good thing I got uh, drives up the wazoo. <laughs> and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna use a gilded die this time, okay. I think. So that's two dots, so that's two dice. And then as yeah. a gilded one, I add it to that or do one of those become so if, gilded? So if you have, let's say, so you have the two circles, it means you get to use 2d6. Yes. If you have the diamond filled, it means one of them can be gilded. So okay. you still have 2d6, one of them will be the gilded, and one of them will be a normal one. And then and any drives you add is an extra d6. Yes, and your lead -in was very ominous, so may I use two drives so I have a total of four dice? You may. Okie dokie. And if you want to pick the result of the gilded die, that'll let you regain a drive. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want that. But I, I did get a five on one though. Okay, make success. So as you get the locket from the doctor, you kind of sit down in a chair and put your hands around it, and just focus, calm yourself. The various materials around your entire body slowly just start to float in a very anti-gravitational sort of way. Like there's no wind or anything. They just slowly in slow motion start to rise, signifying you're starting your connection into the spirit world, into the flare. Your vision kind of leaves the streets of Italy and Rome 
and starts to wrap around the world over into London in this almost like grayscale, faint blues and purples, wormhole tunnel vision. You find yourself on that same street that Clara was when they were taken. The eerie fog rolling in on the street. See a shadowy figure in between the light and the fog. Looks like the shape of Clara. What would you like to do? Oh wait, I'm like there? Mm-hmm. Oh no. D so I just see Clara? You see a silhouette of what looks like could be Clara in the fog. Two street lamps above. Shining down is a bit opaque. The mists of the fog kind of rolling under your feet. This is certainly bizarre. Hello, Clara. How's it going? What's going on? It's a bit silent. Oh. Hello. Could go up to the shadowy figure that looks like Clara. And you sort of started to hear an echoing, a response. Uh, hello, 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 hello. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Uh huh. And as you move towards the shadowy visage, it's maintaining its distance the more you go into the fog. You can't seem to get close to it. Come run faster. You go down the streets, the street lamps pass, two on either side, buildings run by, but that shadowy silhouette maintaining its distance. <sighs> How am I out of breath? I don't even have lungs. Okay, that's not working. Uh, can I look around to see if there's anything else? Make me a, let's say, survey. You sure you don't want it to be a focus? I don't, have, I don't have any circles in survey. How did you become Kermit so fast? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a multifaceted woman, Gabe. <laughs> uh, let's say, uh, for survey, if you're search, track, spotting, uh, focus, inspect, analyze, remember. I mean, I, so I, this I, is more of a... So I'll leave it up to you to describe. I mean, I could use survey, but am I even allowed? Because there's no circles. So you would roll, it would be a disadvantage. So you'd roll 2d6 and take the lowest result. Okay, well, you're the boss, so I, I guess we'll stick with survey, I guess. That does search makes more sense. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, that's two sixes! Whoa. No. What? Oh, how the turn tables. That is a critical success. That is a critical success with the two sixes. What do my ghost um, eyes see? So, <laughs> what are my ghost eyes see? Uh, so this figure, you hearing Clara through the ether, this connection, wherever their spirit is, they can hear you. But the shadowy distance is keeping itself from you. It's not allowing you to see it. As you look around you, the fog starts to get a bit more thick. And at the corner of your eye, Flashes of darkness wisping by you. Uh, Clara? Clara, what? what? Can you hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Where, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Come closer. 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 And they're calling Clara? Oh, sorry. Uh, whisper. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. I mean, I'm trying to get closer to you. What if I I don't think backwards? I'm here anymore. More, more. Oh. That's okay, it's not so bad. How are you processing you that? Not well, well. Oh. <laughs> 
the shadows start to You now can see them starting to circle you a little bit inside the fog, like an animal stalking its prey. They take the form of various shadows of beasts as the bulbous nature of them start to grow. Many legs, elongated necks. One off in the side starts to have insect legs. Ah. Cl Clara, what did this to you? I don't know, I don't know. I didn't see their face, face, face. Candela, Candela, Candela. Corrupted, corrupted. Keep it safe, safe, safe. Okay, we love you. Love you too, too, too. This moment, the very many creatures of the shadows that have been taking hold start to all start to rush you on all sides. As you look around, the fog has now circled you with only a space of air around you. Spiders, winged beasts, demons, all of these silhouettes starting to converge all around you. And then you wake back to where you were. Rome. Boy, do I have some stuff to tell you guys. Blah, 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 blah. And then there were spiders and they jumped on me. Anyway, that's everything. I think Clara mm. might be dead. I think that was her hand, right? And if, if you were talking with her, makes sense. Yeah, but I talked to you guys and you're alive. And Clarence did talk to me, too. Yeah, but, but we talk to you and you're not alive. If she is dead, she's not completely dead. She's in some sort of middle space, perhaps. Imbo. Either way, we need to keep that locket safe. Got it right here. Who so is it? At your safe house door. Hello? Who's that? Are, are you, any of you expecting anyone? No. No rapping on my chamber door. Hmm. Uh, are there uh, <laughs> like ways that Candela, like members, would like let each other know if they were uh, entering a room or like, like they wouldn't just sneak up on each other because we take action before we, you know, like would just open a safe house door. Yep. What would be, what would your code word and password be? Hmm. You did this, Wes. I think that uh, over the years we would have developed different ones, but I think uh, I, I, I think we we go back ten years, and we say, uh, what, what what was it that that you said, Whisper? What are your sexual attractions or desires or? History. I was actually oh, going to yeah. suggest the password be Big Titty Herbalist. I just Big it's, it'd be kind of fun. Who would guess that, right? I like it. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, don't sister, what? don't ask. Sister, do not ask. Oh, I might have. I still want to know what happened. Repo was sexually interested in a Big Titty Herbalist. Oh. So we're waiting Gross. on. I'm gonna open the door. <laughs> oh, hold on. <laughs> they, they didn't say. Did they say big titty herbalist yet? I don't think so. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. As the knock happens, and you're all kind of whispering amongst yourselves, you do hear a gravelly voice say, "Big titty herbalist." <laughs> or right, I'll I'll go get it. But Repo, keep that keep that gun pointed at the door. Ooh, can I hide? Would that be too sneaky? It's up no to such you. Thing as you, too you are a ghost. You can I, probably hide anytime you want. I'm gonna can hide. You, can you possess people? I don't. I've never tried. Don't. I'm gonna try on you right now. <laughs> 
I don't think that's how that, that works. I think I you have to go just, inside them, right? Just let. But let's high five. Don't. Big titty herbalist? Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm going to open the, the door. <laughs> Do I have to roll for that? Or are you hey. just hide? Uh, I, I'm assuming I, I recognize the voice. Roll for big titty herbalist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, for Whisper, you're able to hide uh, from this person if you like. You won't have to make a roll for that in this situation. I'm going to take um, off my sheet, too, so my head's invisible. Tony, you're opening the door? Yeah. Okay. Open it up, and you do recognize the voice. Although it's been some time that you have seen this person, it is your lighthouse keeper who gave you Probably. the mission on the train towards the Bridalburn Mountains. Monty, get in here. It comes. Uh, yes. Um, great job with the assailant from Eos. In custody now. So that must be the last. I think that's about the last part of the tech that we needed. Great job. Um, and you can see that his face looks a bit distracted, like he's trying to work up the courage to tell you something. What is it? Um, I, I don't know how to say this. We know about Clara. Well, I mean, we sort of know about Clara. We know something. But we really want to know more. How do you know about Clara? That's not important. What do you need to tell us? Rather is important, but... Yeah, yeah. Important to us. What do you need to tell us, Monty? Clara's been compromised. She was murdered. What? Yes. Taken out, along with eight other agents. Oh, Clara. It's a coordinated attack. We don't know how it happened. Who would have the capability to pull off such a maneuver? Candela itself hasn't been in much operation over the last decade. The thinnings have been all but obsolete. The crossover from the darkness into our world. We've done our jobs. We have spent the last few years tying up loose ends with Eos and anyone who has able to get their hands on their tech or anything that has crossed paths with magic or the flare. But Clara's gone. Agents are missing. And we suspect a mole within Candela. Monta, you said you didn't know who was capable of this, but I think you do. Who? We are. Candela is. We're the ones yes, capable that's... of this. It's true. We have so many talented agents in the field. That is why we need to call everyone in. We need everyone to come into the fourth Pharos. The HQ so within the flare. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, you gentlemen. There. Yes. If I'm understanding correctly everything that you've just said, you said that agents are being compromised and disposed of, so to speak, correct? Correct. So why, pray tell, would you gather all of the investigators in one place where they are all a sitting target? Does that, do you understand? Does that make sense to you? The fourth Theros is in the flare. No one else but Candela members could possibly have access and if we're able to be there in a controlled environment that we can call the shots, we can try to root it out. Mm. Have you ever heard of a phrase called sitting duck? <sighs> so there's a mole. It's the only way that we can try to gather everybody else. There has been relics left by each assailant. Relics from our vault within the fourth Pharos. Nobody else has access to that except for higher ranking members of Candela itself. Nobody. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather it be 20 against one than sending out agents to die more. Do you have a better plan? We just I found was going to suggest a post. A post? The post used 
send different messages and make sure that everyone is on a different page about a different setting and you gather everyone together under that. But you don't... It's like when you need to find out who's gossiping about you amongst your group of friends. And so you give different information to each person. And when you hear about that information coming back to you in the suspicious circumstances, then you know exactly who your mole is. Does that make sense? That's very smart. I see. Yes, that could work. Would, would you all be willing to initiate this process? We can hold off from the mass invites back into full Pharos, but we would need you to come in. Yeah. Sure. Yes, of course. Easy. Well, Anything to me. learn the discovery of Clara's killer? Yes. In in this oh, case, God. though, Oliana, I feel as though it wouldn't be a message we're sending. We're, we're just putting our lives on the line. It's not a matter of information. It's a matter of elimination. And I think if we all are in the same place, it just sets a bad precedent. I agree. But it does make us more powerful. If we're all in the same place with the killer, then we can all surround the killer. Capture them. If you'd like to enact this messaging strategy, I can hold off from the others coming into Fourth Theros. I can set up a meeting with Director Aurelius, with all of us, and you could pitch this idea to her and stop the others from coming in so we're not all bottlenecked all in the same place. I don't know how someone would be able to access the flare and get into the fourth Theros. It has been a stronghold for a very, very long time. But, as I said, someone within those walls has access to these relics. They are placing them on the victims as trophies. These are our orders, then we should follow our orders, right? That's what we've been doing all along. Why would we stop now? Right, then. Yeah. We should get back and see if there's any more information. Right then. Is my car too banged up to drive us out of here? Yeah, hey, we can fix it up. There won't be much of a need for the car where we're going. And he takes out this cylindrical, square like disc, <laughs> raises it up as it becomes a lantern. Fixes with a little bit of a device in the bottom. That green effervescent energy pulsing on either side. Puts on some heavy duty leather gloves. Yes, Eliana? Oh no, carry on, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I thought you were like about to say something. I <laughs> just want to make sure. Um, so the lantern starts to pulse that green energy, holds it over to the wall, puts on those heavy leather gloves, puts on a notch. And this connection to the flare starts to form. Massive window takes place over the nearby wall in the safe house. Through that window, you see the flare this sort of shadowy, dark, mirrored world on top of her own. The light from inside shining into inescapable darkness. But you see through that darkness, a tall castle-like building, massive column with shining gears twisting to and fro on the face of it. This is known as the fourth Pharos. And it's there, everyone, that we're gonna take our first break. Mm, yeah.
Thanks for calling QuestKeep. What question can I help you with today? What does it take to be a hero? Some would say bravery. Some might say confidence. Others might say a brutal, unprovoked attack by a radioactive animal. But what if there was a better way? You get behind the scenes exclusive for Yeah, and if you're like me and you don't like people, there's some um, digital stuff. No, I'm not really on the phone, I'm just pretending. For the low monthly cost of one banana and a Blu-ray copy of Rambo First Blood Part 2, you could not only be a founding member for the Quest Keep channel, but also use it to unlock incredible benefits, including Quest Keep exclusive updates, early access to content, private Discord community access with a VIP badge, discount on merchandise, lifetime founding heroes credit. Yes, all of that for the low monthly cost of a Blu-ray copy of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom but with no banana, because that Blu-ray is priced just a little bit higher. Because we're such firm believers in democracy, we do have exclusive voting mm. power. Side chowder. Two side chowders. Join the Heroes Haven tier on Quest Keeps Patreon and become our hero today. Mom, stop calling me at work. When a statement must be made, it must be made loudly. Sometimes. The only way to face the darkness is to embrace the darkness. Welcome back. Heroes! Yay! That's us! I am not a barbarian! Settle down, <laughs> settle down. You do you, babe. Kill a few people here and there in the name of don't kill me. There's a little something else in there. We've been through some stuff together. This is how we create Gear bonds. It's been the best part of my life. I'm not going to the temple! You start to vomit all over Aaron. No! He had a fling with a tiefling. Maybe I should wear like a sneaky detective outfit. <laughs> Are you sure I can't tempt you? With this! <laughs> that's not delightful, that's terrifying. Yeah. I'm trying to fight and you got to turn it into a sex thing and that damage was trash! And what is your seventh favorite dream? Mm. Oh my god. Friends solve puzzle together. Friends, our team. I'm good at killing things. Right. And you guys are passable. Hello! <laughs> oh! Lovely wedding. He is now engulfed in flames. I think I got in a couple good hits. Sentinels. Unconscious again. Hello, Zap. Whoa. <laughs> Drop a zero. <gasps> Estravel. She is the devil. Okay, so she's looking for a vessel, and that's. Do not let that happen. Focus fire. You are so hungry familiar and unfamiliar faces of everyone you've ever killed. There is no justice here, only sickness, and I am the cure. No, 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 no. Her eyes go black. Oh, no. No, I'm down. <gasps> Saving them is, that's it. That's all, that, that's all, that's everything. Not ideal to have to kill your friends. She repeats back words that you said to her once. When a statement must be made, it must be made loudly. I've found people and starting to feel like a real person again. Because I have friends. I have friends now. Welcome to Altero, a world filled with romance, seduction, danger. Oh no, watch out. Intrigue. Ooh, what's that? Night creatures. Ow. Secrets. Shh. I'll never tell. And of course, food. Yummy. So join us in Altero for Eat, Slay, Love. Eat, Slay, Love. Hello everyone, welcome back. We're gonna jump right into things where we left last left off. Diving into Candela headquarters, known as the Fourth Pharos, located in the up, oh, not in the flare, my mistake. That resembles a place much like the Upside Down. Uh, as this portal has just been opened from your lighthouse keeper, uh, one by one, you start to go into this other plane. Uh, Fourth Pharos has been the 
main headquarters of Candela for a very, very long time. In its history, there have been incidences where the uh, Pharaoh's headquarters used to be in the material plane in our world. Uh, but through countless efforts of the enemies of Agatella finding it, destroying it, they decided this fourth iteration would be in a place that most people can never access, except for them. As you start to wander into this shadow land, cold just grips your skin and seeps into your bones. The wisps of shadow almost look like this plane is just flat in a flame, but instead of light, it is just bitter darkness. Dark glow hues kind of are mirrored against the horizon. This massive, tall, cylindrical structure in front of you with the gears that Candela is known for, slowly turning, juddering, faint yellow light emanating out of the top of the tower, giving a little bit of dim light around the structure itself. But as each of you passes that threshold from the material plane into the flare, you're all taking a bleed mark. Oh, that's true for me. Wait, Arr. I, so, I have this thing that says, let mm. them in. Whenever you take one or more bleed marks, you also gain additional information about the phenomena that harmed you. Ask the GM a question about the source of the bleed. Would that be applicable here? Oh, very much so. What question do you want to ask? Why does it hurt to, to, to go through the portal? The transference from the material plane into the flare is a very harsh one. It's not a fun process. You just feel your insides kind of s twist and turn, your skin crawls. The flare, this other plane, bleed is a residue off of beasts, uh, materials that are inf uh, inflicted with magic from this world, and you're just surrounded by it, covered in it. Everything in this world radiates bleed and magic. You're not exactly peeling over. You're not like coughing, gasping for air but it just has a very direct effect on your psyche and your body transitioning into the headquarters. Some people, when they veer off too far off from this very well-built path that you can see that the portal is made on top of, veer too far off the correct paths, madness can take over. Get stuck in the flare too long outside of the grounds of the fourth pharaohs, nightmares become reality to you. Your most unimaginable fears waft into your mind for a moment, paralyzing you. But luckily, you're on the safeguarded path as this red brick and a gray stone path that's kind of hard to, like the red is just seeping out a little bit through the gray and black hues that you're seeing before you but slowly you start to make your way to the entrance of Candela HQ with your lighthouse keeper shining the lantern that makes this pathway visible for you from the light coming out of it from the green hue as you follow them into these very massive brass metal doors that also have designs kind of inlaid into them that look similar to the clockwork and gears that are kind of slowly turning at the top the Force Pharaoh's Tower. And as you go in, yeah, Lighthouse Keeper has a particular key. <laughs> Many locks, chained, unfurled, open the doors. And on the inside, it's a bit bustling. There's not a ton of other agents here. Like Oleana has suggested, if we gather all the agents in here all at the same time, it'd be easy to just take us all out at once. And Lighthouse Keeper 
wanted to take that information in and give it to the director of Candela with your assistance. But you can see that other workers are inside are kind of running to and fro, trying to figure out how this coordinated attack could have happened. As you go in, there's kind of this lush red carpeting on the top floor and these two railway banisters that kind of climb up and turn with this gold brass coloration to a second floor. You can see kind of a hallway that goes uh, past uh, the stairwell here. There are windows on either sides. Um, they're barred up, but you can kind of see through the windows uh, towards the flare on the outside. You can see portraits that are on uh, either sides of the walls of the various directors of Candela that have taken operation here over time. Um, as you go up the stairs, uh, your housekeeper is kind of leading you. Um, you look up and there's two massive rooms with shut doors that go off to either side. One is the RK, our archive library. The other one is the gear room that Candela sort of experiments on for their own devices to try to help kill these beasts, help them in uh, various investigations and things like that. Um, you can see multiple offices of doors closed. Um, most of the windows are, have blinds down in front of them. Various plaques of various Candela agents on the other side. Uh, that goes to the second floor, then another group of stairs, same banister-like formation, that lead up to a large meeting room where the director resides. And your lighthouse keeper is kind of leading you through these halls of gold, brass, red, uh, forest green, dark blue. Would you like to continue following the lighthouse keeper to the director's office, or was there anything you wanted to do or talk to each other as this is happening? I was just wondering if I could vibe check the agents who are, who are already here from the top of the stairs using read. Yeah. Using read? Sure thing. Yay. So that's two circles, and so that's two dice. Mm hmm. And I would like to use another one with my drive. Please and okay. thank you. Ah, three. <laughs> um, so you don't notice anyone like taking a second look at you. Uh, if anything, they don't really pay attention to you at all. It's, it's like any sort of government agency would react to a massive attack. There's just a little bit of controlled chaos, but everyone's just kind of running to and fro, lots of dossiers in hands, lots of people asking questions, sort of running by you, being like, how did this happen? We gotta figure this out. Are we calling them in? I don't know, I don't, I don't think the order's been given. So you can just hear lots of people kind of in commotion trying to figure out what's been happening, but uh, no one is seems untoward or they don't seem like they're up to any good, no good. Like they're not here to like, bomb the place or, you know, taking a look at you to uh, to off you at a later date. Everyone's just too busy with their own stuff. Anyone else? I'm anxious to talk to the directors. Okay. You start going up that second floor, going up the stairs. To the tall doors, the director's office sits. And as you notice in the plaque on the side, it says Candela Director Aurelia Suarez. And as you start to open the two doors, it's a fairly large room uh, with a very large desk. Um, there's kind of two chairs with a table in front of them for to have like a little bit of whiskey and for chit chat. It's a bit of a high, tall window um, that is barred and closed as well that has a bit of a, a patio to it, but it's kind of a part of the interior. It doesn't go outside of the building. And then you can kind of see this fairly impressive library collection uh, with books lining all across the walls, ladder that goes up to another level with more books up there. Uh, and you see a female figure at their desk sort of lots of dossiers and ink quills and uh, it's a bit scattered 
a um, bit chaotic. Uh, they're heavy down writing something on a piece of paper. Um, their appearance is wearing this all black attire, uh, but it's a mixture of not pageantry, but it's a bit of beauty and a bit of business. It has kind of like the front part, it's got like a suit jacket that kind of has many, many buttons that go down. The collar is very high up, like a suit jacket collar that kind of goes around here. Um, the uh, sleeves kind of come down and they're a bit, a combination of uh, the material from the suit jacket and lace that comes down to a point in the middle of the back of the palm. Um, and the bottom part of it kind of looks like almost like a trench coat uh, that dangles down past their their knees. Um, hair done up in a bun, kind of reddish hair. Uh, and as the lighthouse keeper kind of comes towards Director Aurelia, with all of you sort of huffing and puffing. <laughs> Director Aurelia, we have to stop this right now. We can't call everybody else in. We have to wait. And Aurelia is kind of about to go to a uh, telegraph on her desk and just sort of looks up at all of you. What do you mean? We have to call everyone in. We need to figure this out. Look, just, just heal them, okay? They make a very, very good point. Tell her. And just kind of motions you all to speak. Now, as you all know, there have been some very unfortunate events lately. Um, I know that we all want to get to the bottom of this and we want to bring everyone in and have all of our resources at our fingertips. However, I'm afraid that's just not possible. I believe that if we call everyone here, that we'll all just be inviting attack, a convenient space, and we also have a mall. So who's to know? It can only be a Candela investigator who got into that room. We are all in so much danger. And if we bring everyone here, the danger level increases. I would like you, Oliana, to make me a sway roll. Two. So you can add drives to this. Players can also add drives to your roll if they wish. You got a five and a three. Five and a three, okay, mixed success. <sighs> Looks over to you. <sighs> All right. We'll hold off from calling everybody in. How, you were on assignment in Rome, Clara in London. I know that most of you haven't spoken in some time, but... Did she send you anything? Did she give you any word of her demise? Not, not that we're aware of. I believe that none of us have received anything. With all the panic and commotion around here, we haven't had much time we have some boots on the ground, still gathering evidence from the other agents that have been collapsed. Clara's office, she requested it go to the ground floor over the last couple of months. Not particularly sure why, maybe she wanted to be more isolated, alone. I will hold off on the mass meeting. If you think something could happen with all of us here in such quick succession, then for that to happen, the mole might have to still be here right now. If we were all going to be here from this call of action that is usually our protocol, and if you're right, and someone is here to enact something horrible happening to all of us, that person has to still be here. Can I task this with you? Find out who this mole is. Start with Clara's office, see what you can find. 
Take whatever provisions you need from the archives, the library, the gear room. I don't want any more agents to die. Yeah, uh, we can we can take care of that. We'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll do our best. Um, we have some ideas, but uh, nothing that we want to bring to you before you right now. I'm trusting you on this. Mm. Eos seemingly was extinguished. All of the factions that have caused us problems in the past have used perverted ways of manipulating the magic or the flare seem to have been snuffed out. We were aware that it might cause great escalation, but not like this. Well, uh, we'll start in Clara's office. Uh, Doc, probably gonna need your uh, expertise down there. Absolutely. Uh, can somebody point us the way? Your lighthouse keeper can lead you. Do you need any anything. questions? Is there anything you're not telling us just because you're a little concerned? Make me a sway roll. Bet. I need you to know my notes are the most conspiracy theory note card collection. <laughs> Sylvia. Five. Red, red. A five. Make success. Has your lighthouse keeper told you what they found in the bodies? Refresh my memory. Relics taken from within Candela headquarters, from the vault. Can't seem to find a connection between them yet. A lot of them seem to deal with ancient history. Some of the very first relics we found and some of the oldest relics that we've ever found have been placed next to these bodies. What we fear is, why these items? Why these relics? The vault has some very, very powerful items in its stead. Some that we still do not understand. Some that we have very little information on, on how they work or how they operate or how they could be ignited, turned on, put into purpose. And, uh the vault. More than one person has access to it, right? It's correct. The vault is used by all investigators. Some who have more stern access than others. Myself, other department heads. But investigators may look into the vault for their own research purposes if they wish study relics, find connections between certain items that they find, sometimes even take them into the field if it's signed off on. Hmm. And Rebo like pulls out a journal and seems like he's making a couple notes and looks at this individual relatively skeptically. And what reason do we have to trust you either? What proof do you need? What can I give you that would show my innocence? How what proof do I have that you didn't orchestrate an attack on Clara? If that was the case, we wouldn't have come back. Or you had to execute the plan that Oleniana had laid out. Hmm. I guess we all should watch our back then, huh? I'm insulted by that. Merely putting out all the possibilities out there, Doctor, did not mean to offend you. 
We're still, yeah, we're still grieving for our breath. We're, we're grieving for our friend here. Let's all count to ten. Director, um, one thing uh, we might need from you. If you could look into uh, any investigators that may have uh, interacted with uh, our corp years ago. Any connection with them. We did some big damage back then. Perhaps it's coming to haunt us now. Even after Clara, the rest of us might be on that radar. I'll look into it. Other than that, let's get going. No time to waste. Thank you. Good luck to you all. Yeah, thanks. Anything you find, report back here. It just sit, signals out to the main doors. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. What was it? So as you all, if you choose to, leave uh, Director Aurelia's office, Lighthouse Keeper, guiding you towards Clara's office down below, if that's where you'd like to continue to go, or yeah. choose a new path up to you. I think that's smart. Clara's office? I think we should. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As we need a way to down, test to see if anyone near us ha is infected by that shade in the way that they were before. Yeah. It's, it's got something to do with that. If that's the... Uh, Clara had that stuff on her. Yeah. It's a good thing that I still have the jar! <laughs> Ten years later. Yeah. Yep. Keep that for I love it. Why a, did you keep that for ten years? A Why ghost. Not? A ghost never forgets. I'm not quite sure what that's saying, but yeah, it is would. now. Clearly, this ghost didn't forget. Mm -hmm. She kept the jar for ten years. Kept the jar for ten years. Kept the jar for ten years. All right. <laughs> Sample <laughs> so. of it. Of the, the the river water, from from before. Yeah, you never know when you're gonna need it. Have you like opened that jar at all? No. Disgusting. Mm. What its own? Uh, what's it called? Uh, ecosystem bubbling around in there. Tony yes. Repo, I've seen your bedrooms. You're one to talk. Why have you seen Tony's bedroom? I don't know. I Listen, don't... I've I've cleaned up my act. Okay. I'm a ghost. I get bored. Hold, hold on. Are nope. you? <laughs> I don't want to hear. It. I don't want to find out. Repo does not want to I... find out. Ghost child has been in. If she's reading his poems again, we're sprawling. <laughs> I think we're she's sprawling. opened up an entirely different jar. Yeah. Let's go check out Clara's office, shall we? We have important yes. matters to to, to discuss. Sold Other than what I've been doing in my spare time. <laughs> we don't need to talk about how I constantly keep myself updated on Repo's poetry. <laughs> Number one poem. <laughs> All right, so as you've gone through the second banister back to the first floor, there's two stairs that kind of descend down and a hallway that continues uh, down to the other end. You descend down into the lower depths of the fourth pharos. Uh, effervescent blue and green lit lamps guiding the way down. A bit dimly lit, but still well enough to see. Uh, you notice a couple more offices down here. The stone from the building kind of irradiating a bit more of a colder feel. Um, 
and you go into Clara's office as the lighthouse keeper has the key. And the lighthouse keeper looks at you and says, I'll leave you all to it. I have some more matters to attend to. If you need any help at all, come find me, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Monty. No all worries, right. Friends. So we're looking Please for up the stairs. for Undark, right? Traces, also, remnants, books, yes. words. Yeah. Also, whoa, I understand why we had to, but we just lied to the director of, of Candela. I mean, we keep things from each other all the time, right? You do? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Also, at this point, Repo was probably like, Repo's probably mentioned the past experiences to Oleana, but he like reiterates that 10 years ago, they came across this horrifying creature that burst out of the mountains. We found this weird goop that was basically infecting all the water in the area that was causing marks and scarring and infection and we were able to manage it but we didn't really know what happened beyond that so there's a chance that clara who was with us previously maybe investigated more and it didn't end too well it's kind of like an old wound probably so undark it's got that like green glow to it right yeah yes unmistakable I can look around, but this isn't really my uh, area of expertise. May I? What? No, I'm shutting up. I wonder if she has journals, perhaps. Maybe in one of the drawers. Maybe she kept documents. I mean, I'm not sure why she'd keep them in her office, but maybe there's some drawer with a hidden space, things we can check the like. Actually, that sounds spot on for Clara. Yeah. She was very organized. Who would like to make a focus or survey? I could do I'll a survey. I as well am skilled in the art of focusing and surveying. All right. And I'm just kind of doing an overall look of the room to try and figure out, like, uh, like areas that she was in like most of the time, things like that. Uh, if I don't know if there's different areas like set up, if she's mostly at her desk, if she was mostly experimenting with things on the side, uh, things like that. So more okay. overall than specifics. I got a four, a four and a five. I got a four okay. as well. Two fours. Four and a five. For, all right. Well, Yana, it's speaking to Repo. How long has it been since you last saw Clara? Myself, eight or so years probably. But we would communicate letters. Well, I might write a letter. She would write letters. But a long so time. it's all been. Hmm. She was very curious. Loved reading. Talked so much. You never really notice how quiet it is until the talking stops. So with that four, Tony, as you go, as you all start to enter into this office, uh, you're kind of just looking around, you're opening drawers, you're finding uh, notepads, you're finding utensils, but nothing that gives you information that you didn't already know about Clara uh, and her work here. Um, you are able to find that she had worked her way up a little bit in some spaces. Uh, that she went from kind of being an investigator to like more of an advanced investigator to getting like access to certain permissions and abilities and uh, and rooms and things like that. Um, you can find that uh, there were some old uh, blueprints of the lanterns that you've seen, the ones that are collapsible. Uh, the green light inside of that that design 
came from Clara. Using pigments of the Undark to fuel the light to be able to see better in the flare, uh, where the dark would just swallow light, they were able to create this sort of light mixture uh, with the Undark and, and magic tech to be able to see clear as day in some areas where light would not, would just couldn't escape this darkness. Um, and also able to start to create thinnings uh, from their own volition. Instead of thinnings just kind of happening haphazardly and creepy shadowy things coming up, they were able to study that process and be able to, on very succinct instances, create thinnings for themselves. Um, but with that, Doctor, uh, looking around, mixed success, uh, you're sort of joining Tony and looking over turning dossiers. Uh, there's kind of a lot of just books piled up, a lot of books about poetry, a lot of books about science. Um, uh, port, you see a picture of you and her on her desk uh, from, from like 10 years ago, uh, still there. Um, but as you kind of looking around and where did you put that necklace? I uh, had it inside uh, a bag inside my uh, my briefcase. Bag inside your briefcase. Okay. Um, you look around and you can see a slight shimmer under the desk. Just the, the faintest shining phosphorescent green glow. Almost like a fingerprint pattern. But just Look. And if you look down your bag, you can kind of see the faintest bit of light shining through it. Let's take it out. Okay. Uh, I do put take on some out. protective gloves and hold it as delicately as I can. Okay. As you hold it in your hand, with these gloves, You see that the pigment on the locket is reacting to the fingerprint on the desk. Hmm. And as you kind of put it over, the charm on the necklace fits perfectly into a groove on the inside. And you take your finger and <laughs> click happens. <laughs> The secret compartment jettisons itself out from the front of the desk. Oh. Did anyone else see this? I'm not imagining this? No. No. Oh. Not. What's in there? Oh, girl. <laughs> so going in here, uh, you find more journals, more files, more blueprints all a bit scattered at first. You see a blueprint of Fourth Pharos. Very old, extremely old, like off the books old, like wherever this, this is like when the Pharos was first built, this is from that very first blueprint. And from some of the blueprints that you've found, Tony, you found blueprints of Candela uh, headquarters from a recent point in time. Comparing the two, you see this compartment underneath the fourth pharaohs. That's not in the new docks. They all long and long and about rectangular like. This pharos is here, this rectangular-like structure over here, underneath it. Oh. Through this journal, written in undark, the pages seem blank. As the locket gets closer, the green ink starts to vibrate. And as you scan through it, you see this phrase over and over again, when shadows and light unite, True power ignites. Betrayal's end lies in the prism's light.
Well, that seems important. Um, so friend Lloyd me, copy that down. Shadow Unite. Something about a prism. Is that a basement? Something. A oh, window. Sure. Could you repeat that again? Is that a basement? The rectangle on the blueprint? Never it is, it's where we're going next. I'm not sure. As you look down onto the floorboards of the office, this undark engineer to react to certain points in the office. You look over to a floorboard that has a couple other fingerprints on it, starting to glow a light green. What was she doing down here? Like, like, what, what, what's the, what's the point of all this? Sneaking around in, in strange places of, of in, in the fourth Theros. What, what? I she do it by herself? I refuse to believe that she was doing anything nefarious. She probably had a theory. She always loved to follow things that were theoretical, prove them real or not. She did have a very inquisitive mind. And a very kind heart. Maybe she just yes. didn't want to put any of us in danger. It's very likely. If it was important enough for her to risk her life and safety, then it must be the right way to go. Yeah. I'm gonna lift up the floorboard. All right, so lifting up the floorboard. It's a, it's a bit hard at first, but you're able to lift it up. And there's a bit of a hole dug. And you see one of the collapsible lanterns nearby. Dormant. But the hole stops. It's not a tunnel that was necessarily digged all the way down. Looks like an impact mark of sorts. Almost like a meteor crater? Is that what you mean by impact point? Almost. Hmm. Like something was used repeatedly here. Well, Can't... if it... Go ahead. I just want to, like, put my hands in the crater and feel its energies and maybe I can get a handle on what emotions are associated with it. Maybe I could Make sense me a... something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, make me a sense roll. I'd like to use a drive as a, 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 a gilded die and drive. Please and thank you. Okay. And I'm gonna use that six on the gilded die. All right. Ooh, that's dope. As you place your gloved hand over the opening, you feel this connection to the flare. This connection that you've had since the day that you became a specter. And that coldness washes over you. Flash comes to you, someone holding the collapsible lantern, causing a portal into this ground, almost like a hammer impacting on the ground. Fades, comes back. You can hear the haunting echoing of shoes clattering on plexiglass. A long, elongated hallway, plexiglass rooms on either side. Shadowing wisps flutter and float in each plexiglass room as they seem to be threaded and connected. 
each glass compartment containing one of these smoky threads, trailing off to the end of a hallway that's covered in shadow. Then two red eyes <laughs> open. <sighs> you come back. Wow, I had another very interesting ghost vision. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I saw. Good heavens! That's concerning. Did you recognize the face when the eyes opened? I don't think I did. Right, God? <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> no, I didn't, no. It's creepy, though. Uh, okay, Be before we go jumping uh, into this hole, then, um, should, do we want backup? Do we want to notify everyone and have all of us go in there? Like, like perhaps it, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I, Instead of I, just us five investigating this creepy space. Well, I... Things have just been proven that no one can be trusted. But perhaps we should at least yeah. tell our lighthouse keeper where we're going so that we're not completely alone. Or, I feel like we can trust him. Or what if we did Olanana's plan and, like, told people different information and, and see which one ends where? Uh -huh. Like, That's maybe we were like, oh, we saw a room uh, made out of stained glass. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. So, so we have them tell different stories, and we see which one comes back. Not quite sure how that would work. Uh, Me I, 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 I like the no. idea, though. So, what I've been thinking is, we've been messages from the director. Mm -hmm. Each of these, we send messages as the director. We get the information back to us, but we also give all of the people here different information as well. Easy enough. My feeling is that one of them will come to us and tell us of a state of emergency that they've heard, and we'll know who gave them that information, or. Oh, it's just so convoluted, but I know I can make it make sense. I understand it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to get information out via rumors, right? right. And, and see which one of those uh, people try and put us in danger, perhaps, using our yeah. own information, and then we'll know. Mm -hmm. Especially if we do it around the temple and play a little game of telephone. Yeah, I I wonder if Monty can just kind of take care of that for us. Monty's really really smart. Perhaps he can he can weave weave that uh those uh that web of lies and and let us know uh, when I don't know uh, when if uh, that information gets circulated. It's worth a shot. What if we say that there's. A, a really powerful relic because they've been leaving relics at the bodies, right? But we just have a different location for this relic. Like, we'll tell one person, oh, it's in the library. Then we'll tell another person, oh, it's in the vault. Another person, oh, it's in Clara's office. And then wherever there's like a, a, a thief situation happens, then we'll know that that location is the person, is the mole. That almost make a change, though. Makes it going to be harder if we have to split up and be in different spots. But what we could say, we could lie about what the relic is. If someone oh. comes looking for a rabbit versus a squirrel versus a possum, we know what they were <sighs> looking for. It means we know who was looking for it, how they were looking for it. Could all be in the same place. I've already lost track. Let's just go in there. All right, talk. Maybe we'll cross this bridge when we get to it. Sing it. Hey, um, Monty, 
I'm, I'm assuming Monty's like sitting out, waiting outside the door for us or something like that. Uh, he left. He went up the stairs to go to oh. other business. Said, "Come, come find him if you needed him." We're, we're running out of time. Let's just let's just dive in. Okay, going into portal. Take that yeah. collapsible lantern. Ignite the undark flame. From Clara's office. The ball is small at first. The impact fairly jostling. You see a couple of things on the desk kind of rattle and fall, but it's there. Maintained. Focused. Thinning. Do you all go in? Can I peek in first? Put, put my head in? Sure. <laughs> you get sucked directly into the vortex the ah. minute that you touch it. Oh, a oh, wisp, oh, whisper. <laughs> I had a feeling that would happen. I'm going to jump in after. After you? Yeah. Beauty before age. <laughs> then why are you still standing here? Okay. <laughs> <Then I go. laughs> all right, one after the other. You all jump into the ground. All of a sudden. You fall into the vision that Whisper saw. A chilling, silent room. Cube after cube of plexiglass going down an unlit room. As you step in, Green lights start to light amongst these plexiglass rooms, illuminating each compartment as it does. Two red eyes open, the red light shining through the shadow and darkness. Hello, more visitors. And just as the next two lights they're about to illuminate the figure. We're going to end the session. That's fine. This is fine. Ah. I picked up a blank note card and all I wrote was horrible.